welcome back to the Romo and Popular Opinions. It has been a while, but I thought I would do I thought I would do the December wrap up anyway. This is going to be a short little video because essentially I read like what <laughs> four or five things and most of them I don't have that much to say about, so this should be like a little treat of a video, but I also didn't want to combine it with January because I'm going to be a bit busy at the end of January, so I'd rather not have that much to talk about. Without further ado, these are the books that I read back in December. The first book that I already promised I would talk about, and quite possibly the longest, <laughs> Jane Eyre. I don't know why this copy, I mean it's gorgeous, but like the font of the title is so tiny that you wouldn't know I'm talking about Jane Eyre unless I actually tell you, but Jane Eyre, I finally said I would talk about it. This book shocked me because I read it so quickly. Like before this book, it's been a while before I cared about a book enough to devour it as I did Jane Eyre. I started reading it and the first chunk, which isn't boring, it wasn't necessarily boring, but it's a bit less dynamic. I read like on one day and then took a break because I think I had exams. And then when I picked it back up, I wasn't able to put it down, I think, till like 7, maybe 7.30 in the morning. And I was just so excited that I was reading this all night because that hadn't happened for so long that I was kind of sad to have to put it down. Next day, obviously, I got up and I finished it throughout the day. This isn't a short book by any means. It's like over 400 pages, but it felt short. I wish I got more. I am not sure how to describe my feelings about Jane Eyre without going into spoilers. And like me, I mean, obviously, this is an ancient book. So if you're spoiled, I'm not sure what to tell you. I will just say that I didn't think anything could live up to the romances of like Darcy, Gilbert, and their <laughs> wonderful women until this. True, I fell in love with the movie. I didn't know how I would feel about the book, but this was one of those cases where I am very happy that I read the book because it's the movie and so much more. Like if you've watched the movie, and I, when I say movie, I will always be talking about the 2011 one. If you've seen the movie, between every single good scene, there's whole entire conversations that the two of them have, like Jane and Edward. So many conversations that just weren't in the movie because obviously you can't have a four hour movie. And it was wonderful. It was just wonderful. Every time they sit down and talk, I was there. I was hooked. I didn't want to put it down. And what actually surprised me was how much they talked. It wasn't a romance built on, how do I even say it, affection from afar and not communicating. They talk a lot. There's like an entire chapter where they just sit down and talk and I love that because it's exhausting. That's why I don't read romance as much because it's exhausting how little the couples actually communicate and that is definitely not an issue in Jane Eyre. You don't have to really throw yourself into the story hoping to fall in love with it. If the author tells you that they're now in love, you can actually see the progression of their mutual respect, then affection, then love, then soulmate level stuff. But obviously this delves into society at the time, how certain people had to behave, what the expectations were and everything like that. But I am not gonna sugarcoat it. I wouldn't love this book if it wasn't for such a well-written romance. And this, this is an example of why I don't like modern romance. Because it doesn't even come close to this. They just pale in comparison. Nothing comes close to this. Which is why I would probably never be reading romance if it wasn't made in this era. Next book, which I don't think I talked about anywhere. And then there were none by Agatha Christie. This I read specifically again because I watched the short series, the BBC, the BBC one. Terrific, by the way, highly recommend. But I've never read an Agatha Christie before and this is the one that really, I don't know, 
stuck with me, I guess. And I didn't really know she wrote so simply. This is one of her favorite, favorite, one of the more popular works. So I didn't know sh her writing style was so simple. There's not that much description and it kind of is very, very fast paced. It's mostly dialogues. And I feel like you could read this if you wanted to within a couple hours, within a couple hours. It took me two days because I, I think I was studying something or something, but I enjoyed it. I think I gave it five stars, but again, I'm not sure if this was really a telling experience with my Agatha Christie knowledge because all my life I've been watching all the Poirot and Marple shows and a lot of adaptations of her works. So I'm not really reading any of her. I wasn't interested in any of her books that I've never watched, if that makes sense. But we've already established that I don't like crime that much in books. So this was maybe a unique experience. Maybe I will get more, but this is the only one thus far that I really wanted to know how she wrote it. And I do have to say I liked the ending a lot more here. I mean, the ending's the same, but they explain it a bit better here. Although it was written a bit anticlimactically, she just, in an epilogue, tells you everything and how it went down. I kind of, I liked the dramatic ending in the show more, but I feel like they ex she explained more than she explained in the show in the book. So this was a bit convoluted, but I'm not sure how to talk about a crime novel without spoilers. I guess my biggest struggle on booktube is how to not do spoilers. <laughs> Next up, I just wanted to mention this so people would know that I'm done. This book. <laughs> I finally gave up on it in December. I'm not sure which which date or whatever. I forgot about it already. I was struggling in the normal Sanderson way because I was finding him very boring and very... I don't even want to get into it. Very boring, very many words that I don't really care to learn what they mean or whatever. But when he crossed the border into get him away from me, that's when I finally DNF'd it. For reference, I think it was page 183 in exactly this copy. So if you have it, you can check and you can know why those first couple paragraphs were quite enough for me to just put it down and be like, okay, thank you. But no, thank you. I never want to see you again. And I know that you have a cult following, but I'm going to have to pass. <laughs> so I don't want to talk that much about it. I'm not even sure if I did a Goodreads review for this. L let me check so I can direct you there. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did do a... <laughs> I did do a review. Safe to say, will not be picking him up again. This was my last attempt. Next up is my first ever, I think, Net Galley book. And that was mostly because I heard Amy talking about it and a couple of other smaller booktubers, never the big ones for some reason. But I realized that I would never be in the mood <laughs> to read actual full length books. So I signed up for some graphic novels and manga and this was the first one that I actually read. It was very entertaining. I think the art style was what actually made it so cool for me. The story itself is a little chaotic. It's like, what what if everyone thought this raccoon or weasel or whatever it is was a dog and no one said anything about it? So it's mostly just cutesy, feel good. That's how I see it. I wouldn't read it for plot reasons, just for like, I don't know, have a comforting hour. <laughs> reasons so I would definitely recommend it. I gave it five stars because I think what it was aiming to be that's exactly what it was and the art is very pretty so. Stop and I won't hold these up so I'll just show them to you. I read Blueberry 1 and I read Blueberry 2, the first two volumes that are all part of the same story so basically five volumes of Blueberry. Stunning art. This is <laughs> drawn by Mebius, who my dad really loves, and I think he also has very stunning art, even though some of it was done on mushrooms. But if it works, it works. I'm, I can't judge. But the art is very pretty. It gets better the more you read, but it's very pretty. That's what drew me in. I don't really necessarily like cowboys and Indians as like a topic of interest, but I really did actually enjoy the way it was written which I didn't expect to. I was just 
thinking I'd flip through it for the sakes of the art. But I did enjoy it. It's basically about the conflict between <laughs> colonizers and Indians in America. Not much else without spoilers, but the first five volumes are one arc and then he goes off into other stories, which I didn't, I mean, other stories within the world, didn't read that yet. But I think I gave most of them four or five stars. Some of them had a couple plot lines that I think were a bit repetitive, but aside from that, I really enjoyed it. I like how it was resolved, although it was a bit anticlimactic. And again, I mean, Mebius's art is stunning, so I do think it's worth it. Again, won't hold this up because it's extremely heavy. And now that I've figured out how to actually do this, I think it's useful to be able to do it. But I reread Saga. I have the Compendium 1. Obviously because nothing else exists yet. And I will have to wait for Compendium 2 at least like 20 years. The world will be gone before this part 2 comes out. But I reread it because now in January, I'm not sure when, I think the 22nd or something like that. The next two or three parts come out so i thought it was time for a reread i don't remember when i reread it last i think sometime in 2020 but this is one of my favorites more so for the art than anything because there's a lot of part in this parts in this story where i am a little bit bored and i like skim the plot but that being said i do enjoy the characters a great deal like, a character that grew on me I didn't ever expect to like is probably Prince Robot. Did not, did not want to like him at all at first, but I think he might be my favorite. Probably because of the arc that he went through. I am <laughs> trash for characters that just stay snarky even when they have to work together with their enemies. And very sarcastic that's what i appreciate about him marco obviously who doesn't like marco sorry the cat is making a mess outside but so anyway yeah i reread all of the volumes i'm still a little bit upset about that ending but now finally we get to see how the hell it continues <laughs> what the hell they have in store i think the art is again kind of what makes it such a favorite for me because it's stunning there are certain pages where it's like the illustration is on both both pages and i think that's very well made and it's one of those rare graphic novels that very much benefits from being in color i guess i'm pretty much used to reading comics or graphic novels in black and white so i really love the fact that this one's in color and i think it is kind of innovative some of the places are pretty unique the only thing i will say is a flaw is it's a bit on the nose <laughs> with the representation a lot of times it feels like they're giving you a lecture about something not just integrating it into a story so i do hope they work on that a little but aside from that i think it's fairly well done. The last book that I will be talking about is Never End Forever by Cressida Cowell. I finally bought this for Christmas if you saw the little like <laughs> Christmas haul shorts. I loved the conclusion actually. I think this series is worth it. As someone who loved How to Train Your Dragon when I was a kid this was definitely a worthy continuation. She has that just magic flair and she captures it perfectly with her drawing style. I don't know how to explain it. I'm gonna try and find something that's like not <laughs> not a spoiler but this is hard because these are stiff paperbacks but I think it was definitely worth the wait. I have all four books now this is like a quartet and I think it's worth the read because it's sweet also teaches you some things obviously if you're a kid but you can appreciate it still if you're an adult. The drawings are just so nice to look at I guess and they add so much to the story and the characters learn something and I will say which I didn't expect for a children's book finale but the last fight and the way that they win felt earned like I feel like they went on such a journey to actually get there and to win and there were some sacrifices some things had to be done one of the things was a little childish but again that's the point 
but I do even as an adult feel like it wasn't over in like five seconds they actually had to do a lot of things to get there and to succeed a lot of things had to happen exactly the way they happened anyway it felt like it was hard won even for a middle grade and I appreciated that a lot I think you could the, the mystery of the entire series is like who the narrator is and I think you can figure that out like I had a hunch since the last book but again it was a pretty good mystery so <laughs> appreciated that aspect of it and I think it was worth it and I saw that she's getting an adaptation of this if it's anything like How to Train Your Dragon and Cressida Cowell adores those movies which means she's happy with them obviously but it means she was happy with how it was adapted I hope this is adapted in a very cool fun way because How to Train Your Dragon are my <laughs> some of my favorite movies of all time so anyway I stand Cressida Cowell and I hope the adaptation is good and whatever next she comes up with next can't wait that about wraps up the video I hope you enjoyed I hope it wasn't too boring to listen to because I'm not that articulate for some reason because I read these a while ago and I don't really have those emotions to recount because it was a while ago and I'm sorry for that but I again didn't want to combine it with the January video because I feel like that would just take ages even though it's been two weeks into January on a bread one book but that being said again happy new year I guess <laughs> officially because this is the first video that has nothing to do with like yearly wrap-ups hope you enjoyed let me know what you read in December if you remember <laughs> at all but this was this was hopefully at least a little bit fun i will see you in the next video